Voyager turned its camera back towards Earth, capturing what basically amounts to Earth's first ever selfie. The picture taken showed these pale blue dots. Four decades, Voyager 1 has been making its journey through space, bringing us unprecedented information. Every single discovery sounded impossible until scientists reviewed the data and confirmed they were real. Another piece of puzzling information has just come through. Neil deGrasse Tyson has confirmed that Voyager 1 detected 500 objects passing by in space, changing everything. Join us as we uncover what the Voyager's message really means and how it might change the way we've thought about space exploration forever. Voyager 1, launched back in 1977, has been cruising through space for almost half a century. Despite its age, this spacecraft is in remarkable condition and usually operates smoothly. However, it's clear that something definitely caught it off guard recently, leading to strange behavior. Just to give you some perspective, Voyager 1 is currently over 14.5 billion miles away from Earth, traveling at a rate of about 3.6 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun per year. That's pretty impressive for a spacecraft that's been out there for so long. The mysterious objects Voyager 1 claimed to have detected are fascinating. It's somehow been able to spot 500 unknown objects passing by in space, things we haven't seen or identified before. This is totally new information and something that no one was expecting to find right now, making the finding even crazier. One possibility here is that the spacecraft's age is catching up with it. Think about it. Voyager 1 was launched way back in 1977, so its circuitry is around 45 years old. It would make sense if the computers don't work the same way, but that hasn't really been the case so far. One key aspect of the spacecraft's long life lies in its dual-redundant computer systems. Each Voyager spacecraft featured two sets of command computer subsystems, Flight Data Subsystems, FDS, and Altitude and Articulation Control Subsystems. This redundancy allowed for seamless transitions between systems and the ability to activate dormant computer components, preserving their lifespan. To maximize efficiency, Voyager's instruments relied on hardwired logic. Due to limitations in power budgets and time constraints during the development of the spacecraft's instruments, electrical engineers came up with simplified systems using hardwired logic. The computer systems aboard Voyager 1 and its twin, Voyager 2, had six onboard computers organized as a distributed system with three dual redundant pairs. A crucial aspect of maintaining the operational integrity of Voyager 1's computer systems involves ongoing power management. Power management plays a critical role in sustaining the operational capabilities of Voyager 1's computer systems given the limited power resources available on board. Engineers have devised several measures to conserve and optimize power usage. One notable aspect of power management is the selective powering down of non-essential systems. Engineers have taken a systematic approach to identifying and deactivating components or subsystems that are not vital for the primary mission objectives. For instance, heaters associated with certain science instruments have been switched off. These heaters were originally designed to maintain the instruments at specific temperatures to ensure optimal functioning. However, by deactivating them, power consumption is significantly reduced thereby extending the overall lifespan of the spacecraft. The decision to power down non-essential systems is not taken lightly. It involves a careful evaluation of the trade-offs between power conservation and the scientific objectives of the mission. Engineers work in collaboration with scientists to determine the impact of deactivating specific systems on the quality and availability of scientific data. The goal is to strike a balance that maximizes power efficiency while maintaining the necessary functionality to continue gathering valuable information about the cosmos. In addition to selective power reduction, engineers also implement power management strategies that adapt to the changing conditions of the spacecraft's environment. For example, as Voyager 1 travels farther away from the Sun, the available solar energy decreases. To compensate for this, the spacecraft adjusts its power usage accordingly. This adaptive approach ensures that the available power resources are efficiently allocated to support critical operations and data transmission. Ongoing technical advancements and improvements in power management techniques 
have allowed engineers to refine and optimize the power systems of the Voyager probes over the years. These enhancements include more efficient power distribution, improved battery charging methods, and advancements in power regulation and control. By implementing these meticulous power management strategies, engineers have successfully extended the operational lifespan of Voyager 1, enabling it to continue its remarkable scientific journey through the depths of space. The careful allocation and conservation of power resources have ensured that critical systems remain functional, allowing the spacecraft to transmit valuable data and insights back to Earth for as long as possible. Considering the spacecraft was only supposed to last for five years and is still sending back information almost 50 years later is astonishing. Knowing the meticulous work the scientists have put into making sure the spacecraft remains functioning helps put everything in perspective too. It isn't just random luck that Voyager is still going. A lot of work and skill has gone into it. However, that doesn't mean that nothing unexpected can happen in open space. Deep space is supposed to be unexpected, but even then, we do have some sort of idea of how things are going to be. Generally, you'd expect the spacecraft to just interact with meteoroids, asteroids, and space rocks, things of that kind. But the Voyager sending messages about detecting 500 objects was just too out there, which is why it became such a massive cause for concern. The researchers working on the project called this an anomaly because the signals came in unexpectedly, and there was no clear way of figuring out what was happening either. Voyager 1 started transmitting mysterious telemetry data back to Earth. Despite the unusual readings, the spacecraft remained responsive to commands from mission control, although there was a slight delay in communication overall. Voyager 1's antenna continued to point toward Earth, ensuring that the spacecraft could receive and execute instructions effectively, so there was no problem there. While scientists were confused by the mysterious data, Voyager 1 appeared to be functioning correctly and continued to gather and transmit data. One intriguing aspect of the anomaly was the fact that it did not trigger any onboard fault protection systems. These systems are designed to activate when anomalies are detected, putting the spacecraft into a safe mode that allows engineers to investigate and diagnose the issue. But in this case, Voyager 1 continued its operations without entering safe mode, further deepening the mystery. After careful investigation, the anomaly was traced back to the Altitude and Articulation Control Subsystem, AACS. The AACS is responsible for precisely orienting the spacecraft and controlling its movements. It was discovered that the AACS had been sending telemetry data through an onboard computer that had ceased functioning years ago. This outdated computer, which should not have been involved in data processing, had somehow become entangled in the telemetry transmission process, leading to the corruption of the information being sent back to Earth. But at this point too, it was confusing why this was happening. Was there really a horde of 500 objects that made the Voyager think it was in danger? They couldn't be certain until they fixed the anomaly. To do so, the mission came up with a solution that involved instructing the ACS to redirect telemetry data to the appropriate functioning computer. This fix was considered low risk and was successfully executed. However, a major challenge faced by the mission team during this anomaly investigation was the significant time delay in communication. That's because of the vast distance that separates the spacecraft from our planet. Voyager 1, after its extraordinary journey, is now located approximately 14.6 billion miles away from Earth. It takes a considerable amount of time for radio signals to travel through such a vast distance. When the mission team at NASA's Deep Space Network sends a command to Voyager 1, it travels as a radio signal at the speed of light. The Deep Space Network is an extensive network of enormous radio antennas strategically positioned across the globe, enabling NASA to establish communication links with spacecraft exploring the far reaches of our solar system and beyond. Its primary function is to facilitate two-way communication between Earth and deep space missions, as well as conduct radar and radio astronomy observations to enhance our understanding of the universe. The international network collaborates with various space agencies, including the Soviet, Chinese, Indian, and Japanese deep space networks, along with the European Space Agency's ISTRAC. By working together, these agencies create a unified effort to explore and investigate the mysteries of space. 
The DSN comprises three deep space communication facilities situated approximately 120 degrees apart. Goldstone in California's Mojave Desert, Madrid in Spain, and Canberra in Australia. This strategic placement ensures continuous coverage and observation of spacecraft as the Earth rotates, making the DSN the largest and most advanced scientific telecommunication system worldwide. Operating on the principles of radio wave transmission, the DSN communicates with spacecraft by utilizing the colossal antennas at its stations. These antennas send and receive radio waves, establishing a vital link between Earth and the distant probes. When transmitting data from the spacecraft to Earth, Deep Space Network Channel 18 is typically used, utilizing frequencies of either 2.3 GHz or 8.4 GHz. On the flip side, when sending signals from Earth to Voyager 1, a frequency of 2.1 GHz is used, and all of it happens at the speed of light. However, even at this tremendous speed, the signal requires approximately 22 hours to reach the spacecraft. This means that after a command is transmitted, the team must wait patiently for 22 hours before receiving any confirmation or response from Voyager 1. This time delay posed unique challenges for the mission team. It requires careful planning and precise execution of commands, as any errors or issues can result in additional delays and complications. When investigating anomalies like the one experienced by Voyager 1, this time delay prolongs the diagnostic and troubleshooting processes. Commands must be carefully crafted, taking into account the anticipated response time, so every time a message is received, it's actually adding to the information, not just being a waste of time.